Hey everybody, it's Jochen Haydn, and I'm back with the Helsin vs. Haydn campaign. This is Warner Pacific, of course. We're playing Scenario 2, and it is January 7th, 1942. Oh, looks like we grabbed a dot base near uh, Luganville. Okay, and we are continuing to unload here at Port Moresby. Um, yesterday, he had a couple 6-inch guns that did a little number on us, one of our ships. Looks like, well, looks like we were able to get get the rest of those guys off mostly okay. Okay, this is the K-15, a Dutch sub hanging off, hanging out near Ambon. And here we go. These sub chasers have these crappy uh, Type 95 depth charges, so if we get a single hit at all, I'd be shocked. In deep water, they, they're not very effective. Oh! Ha! <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> okay, we got a hit. Okay, cool. Definitely not enough to sink it, but it might be enough to send it out of here. Okay, another hit. These sub chasers do carry a lot of depth charges. And... Just as I say that, they run out. Uh, okay. So, two hits, one direct hit. Uh, definitely won't sink it, so even if we see that as listed as sunk, I don't, bu I don't buy it one bit, but it might drive it out of here, which is good. Okay, no night bombing. We haven't seen hardly any from the uh, Allies this campaign so far. Okay, and we're continuing to land troops at Port Moresby. We should have enough on the on the base now to take it. I hope we'll find out this turn. We're definitely going for it. Fortunately, it doesn't look like the coastal guns are doing too much damage to us here. Ooh, ah, man! Shoot. Well, that's not good, guys. Uh, that's going to sink. Looks like we got uh, Mark 14 here. Dang it. There is troops on that. Okay, so I sent out a couple of destroyers over here to deal with these guys because I got tired of looking at them. Some Dutch uh, AMCs. Stupid Mark 14s. They don't work until they do, right? Oh, one hit? <laughs> that won't cost a lot of ammo. Nice. Looks like the uh, the Kikazuki and the Mikazuki are just uh, using this guy for target practice. Yeah, there we go. Two two less ships that I have to look at now. Okay, this is the I-2. That's going to probably be down here somewhere in the, near the penalty box. Oh, looks like we took a hit there. That probably would have done minimal damage. And there we go. In the penalty box. Okay. Air operations. Let's see how many 
uh, cancellations we get from weather today. Hopefully none from Keto Butai, but with my luck, we're going to get some. Okay, there's cancel, canceled, canceled. <sighs> Come on, man. Okay, well, what I didn't see was any canceled missions for Keto Butai, so that's a good thing. Hopefully, we have a nice raid today. So I got some bombers heading out to uh, do some damage to Malay Belay. That's what I really want right there is the supply dump hits. Because we need to bleed the supply out of these guys quickly so we can finish them off. Nice. Air base supply hits. Those are the most important things to me right now because that's what's going to bleed these guys out of supply. And my estimate is he's got no more than 8,000 supply to start with there. So this is good. Clear sky over Kwai Lin is going to be good for us. We need that. So we're going to have heavy bombing rates in this hex because I'm attacking here. i got to get these guys cleared out of here because I'm messing with my road to Ai Chang. Severe storms are going to be an issue in this hex. But we're going to disrupt them really bad. Ooh, nice. Good hits there. Look at the size of this rain. Nice. Look at that. Oh, that's so money. Yeah, they're done. Okay, a sweep coming in a little late there, guys. Okay, this is just softening up old old uh, Basine. We should be attacking her this turn. Clear sky. Should be a good day here. Decent hits. Really decent hits here. This dragon was coming in now. Yeah, this unit, this this whole hex is gonna fold when we attack. There's no way they can't. But wait, there's more. Oh, nice, dude. They're done for. Okay, that's the AM phase. Where's my Kido Butai bombing raid? Why didn't that go off in the morning? I don't understand it. Oof. I might want to get my subs out of there. I hope our Kido Butai raids go down. All right, so we're hitting poor Moresby now. Uh, this is just to soften up the troops for the attack that's coming here. Don't really cause a lot of damage there. Where is my KB strike?
Oh, I swear to God, if they don't go, I'm going to be so upset. There was no indication of bad weather, so why wouldn't they? Oh, come on! They didn't even fly at all! Oh. Ah! And on top of that, we have a, a, a stupid, what do you call it, the, the torpedo. Oh, why didn't KB fly? Alright, this is us landing here at Lay. No, that's not Lay, it's Salamaua. Wow, a lot of losses there. Why didn't KB fly? Alright, so we took another shell hit to this guy. I'm really mad right now. I don't understand it. Okay, this is us bombarding him. Okay. Alright, here we go. Deliberate attack at Port Moresby. Uh, these guys look pretty weak. I think we might be able to take it. Nice. Hello, you fighting orphans of the Pacific. This is your favorite enemy, Orphan Anne, at Radio Tokyo. With music to lift your spirits Sweet. and words to depress your morale. But first, Imperial General Headquarters announced today that... The ever-victorious forces of the Japanese Empire have captured Port Moresby. Alright, good. Okay, and the same old thing here. I'm just trying to wear this unit down. But we're not getting... We're hardly doing anything to it. Okay, this is us attacking here. I don't know how this is going to go. Apparently it went good. Cool. Alright, and then this should go very, very good because these units are completely destroyed from the air attack. Cool. Push them right back into the swamp. Inflicted heavy losses and they're really not a factor anymore. <sighs> I don't know why Kitobutai didn't fly. I saw nothing that suggested that they were going to have a mission cancellation due to weather, so I don't really get why they didn't fly. It's really, really upsetting me. It's a wasted day. Yep, just doing some refits while I can. Hopefully I'll have that resolved in a turn. <sighs> what in the world happened here? Light rain? Is that what is that what it was? No. Oh. I don't even know. We'll figure it out. Dang it. Well, it wasn't the best turn, but we did get something done. We got Port Moresby. Not bad. All right, let's take a look at the uh, intelligence report. Aircraft losses today, four for us, one for him. We lost a one, we lost a 1B Oscar, an Anne, a Betty, and a Babs. He lost a Lodestar. Of those four aircraft losses, we have one killed pilot. Since we're looking at pilots, let's take a look at our wounded pilots to see if we can get anything out of that. Alright, so it looks like we have a 
So Chiyo Shima, let's send him to reserve. And this guy. Oops. Let's send this guy here, Nabara. All right. And then if you look at the reserve, it looks like we do have a few more wounded pilots that we're not getting back. So we're just going to go ahead and retire these guys because they are so badly hurt that they just can't come back. Bummer. Okay. Uh, let's get back to business here. Looking at the army loss points for this turn, we took out 44 allied points worth and we lost one of our own. Ship sunk this turn. Uh, this ship was sunk near Shortland Islands. It had some troops aboard, but we were able to rescue some, so the losses weren't too bad. It was a Mark 14 torpedo, go figure, of course. S-40 has been reported as sunk. I don't necessarily believe that. I think it's still afloat. The K-15, I don't think sank either. Remember, I told you about this. There's no way one Type 95 depth charge is going to sink a Dutch sub. We did manage to take out two of his AMCs with some of our mid-war destroyers there, or basically World War One vintage destroyers. All right. Um, big goose egg on the strat points here, and we'll talk about that when we get to the Keto Butai. That was a big disappointment for me. But all in all, we still managed to gain 356 points, and that brings our win ratio up to 1.886. Okay, so I'm going to spare you guys today. I went to the Combat Reporter, and I didn't really see anything in there that I thought was worthwhile to talk about. So we're just going to skip it. We'll just skip it today, and we'll get on with looking at the situation. So let's start with Northern Pacific. Nothing spotted. Nothing's happening up here that we can see. Status quo. I'm just hanging on to ADAC. We're building up the base, and that's really all we're doing. I don't know if I, I have the energy or the time... To continue up this path right now in home islands we're still taking it very careful up here i don't know where those two cruisers that killed my patrol boat over here have gone they could easily show up here within one to two turns longer and i just am very worried about losing ships up here so we're just not going to try it not for the time being i need a little more reassurance before i start moving ships through here again but uh fortunately we did get a bunch of supply into Sapporo, which means our industry expansions have resumed, and we've also got supply to all the other places it needs to go. So we'll keep dumping supply into Sapporo and Hokkaido as a whole to continue expanding uh, industry at Sapporo that got stalled a bit because I didn't realize this when I set up my turn or the campaign. Okay, let's talk about China. There's a lot going on here now. Some of it's good, some of it's bad. Uh, here's the good, and I'm going to bust out my trusty little... Uh, tool here we had a nice victory here and we took out this unit here pushed it back into the swamps which now frees the road going into Ai Cheng uh, which is going to be important to me because this is a size 4 base now for aircraft which gives me more range into this part of China if I want to bomb stuff okay um, here's the bad stuff we've got Chinese units infiltrating all over the place. Let me sh give you an example of a few infiltrations that we're dealing with now. We've got units here and here, here and here. So now these roads are blocked partially, right? We have an infiltration here. And we've got these guys heading down this way to do who knows what. So you guys see that, right? We have these guys blocking the roads. But here's the good thing. Watch this. And this is very important. These units aren't really causing me any disruption right now. Okay, they did cause a little bit of disruption. Let me show you this. I had these aviation support units heading up to Sion. They were going down this road. They were doing just fine. But this unit popped in here out of nowhere and, and blew them off course. And now they went off-roading here. And it's going to take me forever to get them back on the road. So that was kind of a that was kind of a mess. It's going to probably take me two to three weeks to get them back up into Sion now. Oh, well. I don't really need Sion as a base right now. It's nice to have. I don't got to have it. Uh, but let me show you this. Despite all these units being in these hexes, I can still draw supply paths to my important bases. I can still send supply 
to Sion. I have multiple routes to do that. Okay. I can still get supply into Ankang. Because check it out. Look at the supply path. From here, all the way up this road to Sion. Despite his units being on this road, it is in no way, shape, or form going to be disrupting my supply flow. Let me show you why. It's all about the paths here. Uh, if I hit one on the keyboard, oops, hold on. One on the keyboard here, we see I have clear terrain. And from clear terrain, then we move into this road hex, which we still own the hex sites for. So my supply can flow through here and go up the road. And because they've occupied every hex, the hex sides are open and it allows me to get supply back into the places I need to. Again, Sion. You see we have these wide open supply roads. Despite him being on this road here, the supply can flow other places. And if you look at it, we can use these roads and they cut down the supply cost despite the type of terrain that it is. So he's being disruptive, but it's more of a nuisance. It's not actually disrupting my supply. Uh, if you see here, Ankang's got tons of supply. Sion's got tons of supply. I have no supply issues right now, despite these incursions. So, if anything, it's a good thing for me because all these units, right? All these units here. Look at them all. I'm circling them for you. You know what these units are? Do you know what these units are? These are units that are not here in Chun King. I haven't killed any of these, and I don't want to kill any of them. Look at this. All these units that I'm circling on the map, they're not here where I don't want them because I want Chun King long term. How I'm going to get there, I have no idea. But long term, I want Chun King. That's the goal, right, in China. That's no surprise to anybody. But uh, the more units that I kill down here, the more units that are allowed to escape up this way, Make it that much harder for me to take later on. So it's actually doing me a, a favor having all these units stuck behind the lines and doing whatever they're doing because they're not here. And I'm not killing them. So I, I honestly think that's kind of a win. It is inconvenient because I have to reroute some troops around stuff. But I, I can I can clear up the roads as, I, as necessary. But supply is not being blocked. So that's good. Okay. Uh, in this part of China, we're just maneuvering down here. I am looking at taking Nanning and Lu Chao and Kui Lin at some point, no time soon. I'm just maneuvering down here just to keep him busy because he does have a lot of troops tied up here, right? If you look at these numbers, there's a lot of units down here that aren't in Changsha, in Chongqing, up in here. So we're keeping him busy, and that's fine. The units that are down here are not up here where our main axis of advance is, right? Okay, so uh, here we are looking at Burma right now. For some reason, this unit did not shock attack, so I put them on deliberate attack for this turn. There was a river crossing here. If you can see the purple line here, they should have shock attacked, and I don't know why they didn't, but that's fine. It's actually better this way now because when I deliberate attack, we'll take way less disruption and way less disabled squads because we didn't have to do that river crossing attack. So this is actually really good for me. Uh, we also have armor into Prome. Right? We will attack next turn and we should be able to eliminate this unit or at least push it out of the way. We also get into Tungu. Uh, let me take a look here. It looks like next turn will be in Tungu. In two turns, we should flop over due to proximity. Uh, yeah, within two turns, we should have this base. And then we have a nice little buffer in Burma and we'll continue up the road. Let's use the little overlay here. So next turn, we take this base and this base. In two turns, we're going to take Tungu, and then we continue up this road here, but we're very careful not to take this base. This is Magway. This has oil, and what we don't want to do is take the base or let it flip over on us so then his B-17s come here and bomb it. Uh, Magway oil is very important to our war effort. It's 300 oil centers. I don't want to lose it. The refineries I'm not as worried about. The oil is irreplaceable, okay? And then we're just going to keep driving up this way and eventually get into Lashio. Uh, that won't be easy to take. It's going to be in times three terrain. And he's got a lot of troops here and probably a lot of supply. But, you know, if we can cut him off by flanking around this way, we'll just starve him out. Okay. Continuing on. 
Uh, this unit should get into uh, Morgi next turn. And two turns will take that one. His looks like his um, units did get into Victoria Point. And quite honestly, that's a good thing. Because here's what we're going to do. We're going to go into combat and deliberate attack. And we'll get some training on this RTA division. And we'll kill this guy off outright and be done with any kind of disruption on this part of, of uh, Thailand. Okay, um, Singapore, we're just kind of hanging out, looking good. Reorganizing, getting my troops rested up. Uh, the base is built, aircraft are repairing. We're looking good here in Singapore. Got lots of ships in there. Borneo, looking good. I'm taking a strategic pause here in Borneo because, again, I am very careful not to take these oil bases that, like Balak Papin, Miri, because they're still technically within range of his B-17s if he wanted to attack from Palembang or from Balak Papin or even from Batavia. He could probably... No, can't get there. But, yeah, I, I, I just want to make sure that I neutralize his bomber bases around before I take these bases. I don't need the oil at this moment. I have enough to keep going for a few more months, and I don't want to have to worry about getting these bases bombed because Helsin has already demonstrated that he's more than willing to bomb bases to, to turn after we take it, right? Look what he did to Rangoon. He hit my refineries the turn after I took Rangoon when I was not in a position to defend it. So I'm very careful to take my time here and not let him do that to any of these other important bases that I need to have. Uh, looking at the Philippines, uh, we had bad weather here this turn. So we, if you can see here, basically all of Luzon was fogged in, rained in. No aircraft flew this turn, but that's not a big deal because these bases are trashed as it is. They're not really usable. The only thing it did deny us is taking out some supply, but that's okay. We have time. I'm in no rush here. We did successfully get our troops back into Manila, however, and we have... Quite a bit there with more on the way. And we got forts, we got airfields, we got everything we need in Manila. Looking good. Okay, Mindanao. Um, we got some good supply hits this turn. We're slowly wearing them down. Uh, I need to attack here soon, but I want to try to hit it a couple more times before I do it to try to take out his supply because these units are still important. We have about a a one to one AV parity right now. I know he's down to a size zero fort. We took out the only fort he had, but still this is mountain terrain and it almost triples his assault value when we attack this way. So I really want to make sure that the troops in Malaybale are almost out of supply before we attack again. And I can wait a little bit on that. Not much longer because I need this division freed up. Dutch East Indies, nothing happening here. We're just consolidating. Now, let's take a look at Port Moresby. Um, this went so well for me. And Desert Wolf did tell me, hey, I was looking at your recon. And I don't think he's got hardly anything there. And he was absolutely right. If we look at the combat report for Port Moresby. Uh, let's see, where is it at? Clock, uh, uh, Port Moresby here. Take a look at this. Three assault value. Guys. What the heck? He pulled everything out of Port Moresby already. He he air evacuated it. He's been using his transport planes to pull troops out. So he gave us Port Moresby for free. We took zero losses uh, when we took the base. And what he has left is basically nothing. So these units that we took out, um, from my estimate, they have no guns. No vehicles and just a little bit of infantry. I could send a naval guard unit out to chase him down and finish him off. This will be nothing. Look at that. He lost no squads because he had none left. It was all support units. So Sir Robin, Sir Robin in full effect here in Port, Mor in Port Moresby. And that was a nice little base flop over. Uh, so the question is now. Now that we know that he completely abandoned Port Moresby for all intent and purposes, where is the red line in Australia? Is it here? Is it here in Townsville, Cooktown? Where is Helson drawing the line? Where does he stop retreating? 
I don't have good uh, recon on these bases yet. But geez, if he pulled out of Port Moresby, how much further south did he pull out? So I'm going to use Port Moresby to start reconning Cooktown, Carnes, uh, uh, Cairns, however you crazy Australians say it, Townsville. That might be a bit of a stretch for my recon, huh? At least, at least the cans. Look, can we reach it? 11, 14. Yeah, I think uh, uh, Adina might be able to get to Townsville. But I want to start checking these bases to see if he's got anything here. I'm starting to wonder if he does. I honestly don't think he does. <laughs> I think he pulled so far south. Oh, look at that. I don't even know where his red line is. So, guys, what we need to find out here soon is where is the red line in Australia for, for Helson? His Sir Robin thing, I, this is the epitome of a Sir Robin tactic, right? Look what he's abandoned. I don't understand it. I get I get the concept. I just don't get the, the application. Like, where do you draw the line as an allied player as to what you're going to defend and what you're not? Honestly, if he had just taken all these units down here and stacked them in cans and Townsville or Cooktown, I wouldn't even be talking about this right now. I'd see he had, I would see he had armor and artillery and all that in here, and I wouldn't even think about it. But it's just starting to make me wonder, like, hey, maybe Australia is viable for me. Because he's already abandoned so much up here. We hadn't had to fight for hardly anything. I mean, jeez, look at this. Look what we took. With no losses. So maybe we can start dipping in here. Maybe we can get all the way down to Brisbane. I don't know. We're going to take a look at this. Uh, I expect to see recon flights flying next turn. Because I got to know. Where is the red line for Helsin? Alright, on to some not so great news. Um... Kido Butai did not fly at all last turn. Nothing. And I know they didn't fly because we saw no missions were even canceled. And when I looked at the sortie count on KB, it didn't go down. The sortie count will go down even if your aircraft take off from the carriers and you find out that the weather over the target is bad. You still eat the sorties for that turn. We didn't even fly. So I'm looking around at all the potential bases, right? If we hit F7 on the keyboard, I, I I don't get it. I don't know why we didn't fly. I, it's got to be weather, right? But that really it costs us another day, and that sucks because we don't have a lot of time left down here. Fuel's becoming an issue. Um, the fact that he's got P40s coming into Australia any day now. We just can't keep doing these strikes much longer. we got other places to go and other things to do. And every day that we don't strike, I'm losing strat point potential. And I really need a lot of points here to make up for these losses I've taken. So um, these guys not flying is really putting me in a bind. It's, it's kind of a pain. Yeah. But overall, I would say the turn was good. And I like how things are going. I really like our position in the Coral Sea, Solomon's area. We're looking strong here. Dutch East Indies, we captured all of the bases that we want to capture at the beginning of this whole operation. So uh, we've neutralized everything of any real value all the way up to basically Java. That's great. Um, Mindanao's going okay. Uh, Luzon, we had some setbacks, but overall, I think we're okay. We're just going to keep bleeding him dry of supply. That's our that's our goal here. Malaya went exceptionally well for me without without even doing a um, what do you call it the the mercy and gambit which I was really opposed to doing. Uh, we still took Singapore by the third or fourth the third of of January, which I think is fantastic considering the relatively low losses we took. You can't do better than that. I th well, I guess you could do better than that, but not much better. I'm happy with it. We already have Rangoon. So we've cut the Burma Road already. China, we've got a lot of his troops tied behind the lines. We own the entire Anking Road from Nanyang all the way up to the Hex up here. Now, we don't own that Hex, right? He does. But we're in it. And it's making him have to to uh, figure out like how to handle that. So, yeah. Happy with it. I think we're doing okay. If you have any feedback for me, I'd love to hear it.
So again, Discord's the best place to talk to me because I'm there all the time. Um, we have over 315 members now. And we're continuing to grow, so I hope you'll join us if you're not there. But otherwise, just leave your comments in the video, and I answer every single one of them where I acknowledge you. I want to talk to you guys. The whole point of me doing this thing on YouTube is to engage with the community and to have these discussions because I love this stuff. I'm nerding out on this game, and I love to have conversations about it. So anyway, that's the turn. We got a lot more stuff coming up soon. I've got some major, major, major operations planned within the next 15 to 20 turns. They could be anywhere. I won't tell you where. Or maybe I'm actually just lying and we have nothing planned. Who knows? OPSEC, OPSEC. I'll catch you guys in the next one.